Have you often wondered why you can see the false form ligament in cases of pneumoperitoneum more commonly in children than in adults? Well, here is my theory. In a child, because the liver is relatively large compared with the rest of the abdomen, this makes the false form ligament look fairly perpendicular to the abdominal wall. And so when the x-ray beam is transmitted through the patient, it becomes tangential to the false form ligament. And the false form ligament will only be seen if the x-ray beam is tangential to it. In adults where the liver is relatively small compared to the rest of the abdomen, compared to a child, the false form ligament is oblique to the beam. And that's why it's hardly ever seen in cases of pneumoperitoneum. So here is an example, a patient with necrotizing enterocolitis. Here is the football sign of pneumoperitoneum, and you can see the false form ligament here. That's because the false form ligament is tangential to the incident beam. In an adult, this patient has got Rigler's sign denoting pneumoperitoneum, but there's no false form ligament sign because the false form ligament is oblique to the incident beam. If the patient is then oblique to the beam, so the patient's slightly rotated, that is the situation in which you'll see the false form ligament. So the visibility of the false form ligament is very similar to the visibility of both sides of the bowel wall. It's effectively Rigler's sign but of the false form ligament. But the only time you're going to see the false form ligament is if the x-ray beam is tangential to the ligament. So in children, this is more likely to be seen, whereas in adults, because the liver is relatively small compared to the rest of the abdomen, the false form ligament tends to be oblique to the beam and then you won't see it.